Welcome to another <laughs> Inside the Barrel with John and I, where John is supposed to do the intro, and <laughs> and today we're talking about Knowledge 2023. We, uh, it's been a while. We have been on hiatus because John and I have been yeah. too busy. Um, but I recently did a podcast um, oh, with Ashu, so busy. and that was really cool. Um, so that was a uh, exciting times as well. And yeah, John, t- talk to me. How was last week? How was knowledge 2023 in Vegas? Um, <laughs> I'm being disrupted by one of my chickens. It just laid an egg. So it's got to tell the world. It's just going crazy. Anyways, last week, knowledge. Um, I had a really good time overall. I, I really enjoyed it. It probably been what like five years since I'd been to one, and uh, so it was good to get back into knowledge, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I will say, I'm pretty irritated about the lack of swag from Service Now that had been prevalent in all the previous years, like especially the backpack. Mm-hmm. No backpack this year. That made but- me quite sad they did do this like if you go to certain a number of booths and you take a photo you get a tote bag or a hoodie so i ended up getting a hoodie mm. nice yeah uh, yeah that's kind of makes me have to be way more social <laughs> than i already am <laughs> yeah so tell me about tell me about your experience. How was it on the floor? What workshops did you go to or labs did you go to? Maybe a session that you saw? Maybe still there with me, John? Um <laughs> the expo floor was was Yeah, I'm still here. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like the floors, you know, I think the last time I'd been to knowledge was in Vegas. So it was all pretty, pretty similar. Definitely, you know, a different setup. I think there was a lot more centralized uh, service now stuff right there. As soon as you walk in, um, it, it did feel a little bit, not maybe not filled out as much as they could. You know, when you were walking into the expo, expo center, it felt kind of empty on the uh, left side, right when you walk in, mm. there was some stuff there, but it just seemed very open over there. And then as you got around to the uh, uh, partner booths and, and other booths, it definitely was filled in quite a bit. Um, and it made for easy navigation, I guess, because you really just kind of looped around back mm. to the entrance. Um, I guess from my point of view, the, the sessions weren't nearly as um, good f- for me. Like I, I know other people found a lot of usefulness out of like, you know, there was a lot of uh, stuff around uh, AI and um, automation and stuff like that. But for someone who does a lot of portal stuff, there just wasn't a lot there. I think uh, Maria had her, I, I went to a, a, a lab from Maria, ah, Maria five names. I can't, I can't do all of her names. But she's awesome. She rocked it. She did a, a lab on why you you know why to use or why should you use uh, Angular uh, providers, mm. and she did a really good job there. I was really I, that was really a a fun one to go to. She even called me out in it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. No, I, I really had a good time. Um, I went to one lab. This one kind of was disappointing they they weren't using a pdi to do any of the lab it was all mm. kind of uh they, they were going to use figma and um what was the it, lab for i don't know i uh some ux stuff i was i was looking into ux ui labs and i was hopeful for this one but i just i didn't even make it all the way through because i there wasn't a compelling interaction there. You know what I mean? Mm. And so I, and I don't know if that's 
all UI UX stuff, but man, it just wasn't, it wasn't something that was useful to me. Mm. Um, How was... And then there were others and I, and I, someone, a client of ours was talking. What's that? So go ahead. Continue. I was going to say, I was speaking with a client of ours who also noticed kind of a, the same thing I did, that there were some sessions that uh, the presenter came out right off the bat and said, you know, we, we haven't even finished our roadmap yet. We're kind of still in the beginning of it, but they presented it as it was supposed to be, a, you know, this is our journey, but we're still in it. We haven't completed it yet. <laughs> so that was kind of like, really? Why are you presenting now? You may not even finish this journey. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a safe harbor on that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How was uh, I heard? What about through you? the? I heard through the grapevines you uh, were at a hackathon. How how was that? Well, that's funny because I I heard that same grapevine that you were there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, out of all the years I've been, you know, going all the way back to 2014. Um, this is my first hackathon. So this was my first time doing one. Um, I've always thought about doing them, but just never got around to it. And this time, uh, my boss was like, Hey, you're going to do a hackathon with us. And I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so we did one. Uh, it was a neat experience. I, I I'll have to say that the, uh, uh, being subject to not only, uh, Oh, what's that game show? I can't even think of the name of it. Just have Richard Dawson. Fam- now it's uh, Family Steve, Feud. Something or other. Fam- family Feud, that's right. Uh, being subject to Family Feud and then karaoke while we're trying to <laughs> build an app. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chuck. You shouldn't try for aha songs. Those high notes are pretty high. <laughs> Yeah, th- thankfully but, uh, I had a so dinner at do? that we- time, so I like skipped that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but we we built an app uh, for help in 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 uh, scheduling nurses, and we <laughs> we called it TJ Booker for for those old enough to remember TJ Hooker, <laughs> even though he was a cop and not a nurse. <laughs> but we got honorable mention. So I, I'm pretty happy there with my first hackathon getting honorable mention. That was kind of fun. Yeah. And I heard like the difference between honorable mention and finalists and winner was like so small as well. So we, we could have almost won. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. For, for me, like the floor, like I agree with you when you walk into knowledge, you're just like service now is like everywhere. And like, you're kind of like, you know, as a partner, we're kind of like on the side <laughs> and and maybe that's okay and, and normal. Um, but it was like hard to find our booth sometimes. It was just like um, lots of walking. I, I feel like I, I walked so uh, many miles. Yeah, and... I was pulling just, just under six miles a day. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, I thought the sessions, I went to one session, the one on like your JavaScript zero or string zero. That was cool. It was like a little tidbit on uh, and interactive on, you know, how to be more of a defensive programmer. Like Mm -hmm. it talks about like how zero um, is, is is falsy. Right. Um, So, and how weird JavaScript is on handling empty strings or the string zero and, (laughs) and true. And how, yeah, and how you're going to, like, get into pitfalls and how, like, return objects of glide record always return a string. And so, like, needing to know that if you're going to do an if on yeah. it. Um, so it, it reminds me of, like, how how mine is always the, like, if it exists, if the type of is not undefined. Like, I'm just, like, constantly adding as many checks as I can where there's probably, at least in the newer um, yes. ES12, there is easier ways to do that now. So I think we're going to start seeing more of that yeah. as, um, as that becomes more common in, in the development space of, of essentially better checks of if something is true or false or empty or not. So it was a good talk. 
Um, yeah, I can't yeah. can't remember his name. Sorry, um, but it was a really cool talk. I, I sat next to Jace. It was great. Jace didn't even recognize me in person. I said, "Nice to meet you in person," and he was like, <laughs> "Who are you?" <laughs> so, I was like, "I was like, I was on a, a video with you like a month ago." <laughs> so, Jace, we did a we did a podcast together. Come on, I yeah, know, that was you know that was probably one of my favorite parts about about knowledge is seeing all the people that i haven't i haven't seen in like five years Ugh. of course long mowers are out now <laughs> um anyways yeah so being able to get pictures with people i met tim i, I have never met tim in person before mm. so that was fun um and just yeah just getting to see people that i haven't seen in years was awesome yeah, I mean, I saw coworkers I never saw in person, right? Like, so it, it was cool <laughs> to see all the people you work with for the first time. Yeah, it was, like, I mean, it was, it was the first time we met in person too. Yeah, yeah, we we also did a podcast while we were there for the people that were like really fast, but it got taken <laughs> we, down. We tried, we tried <laughs> to do a podcast. It, you know, walking, like, the problem is, is the, the internet there wasn't, like, perfect in every spot. And so, like, no. you would, like, it would cut in or uh, it would cut in and out. Like, I think I would have had to buy, like, super satellite internet and, like, walk around the conference to do, like, a really good one. Yeah, so. seriously. Have, like, high-end equipment and uh, super fast hockey puck to get internet throughout the entire expo floor but we did try we tried we were talking about yeah. doing one and we did start it but uh, it did not come out well <laughs> yeah um and <laughs> i also did a fun session on rpa so that was cool because normally rpa you need like a vm or a windows machine and you need like a bunch of stuff installed on the windows machine you need the plugins installed on your instance so they had like a pdi set up to to play with rpa and it was cool it's kind of wow. like your ui path your like browser testing kind of thing and i was able to go to the rpachallenge.com and fill out the form so uh Shout out to whoever has gone to that website to play around with RPA. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, and then, yeah, I, I agree with you, John. I think meeting people was probably the, the best part about that. Um, an expensive way to meet people, but uh, meeting uh, people. It's so true. Yeah. But that's what kind of, you know, a after going a few times, that's kind of what it turns into is you start mm -hmm. networking a lot more than, than really looking at the, uh, um, the sessions you're going to go to because uh, it, it's more eventful meeting the people and talking to them. And, you know, I got to meet some of our clients that I'd only ever been on calls with. So it's, I think it's just one of those things where it's the personal interactions is rates way higher. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and I think, so I went to the one last year in the hog and it was cool to meet people on in Europe and it was cool to now meet people in the U S right. So it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And speaking of that, you, you know, who, you know, who found me? Well, I think we were together when he, when he came up was Arnud. We were, we were yeah. talking to someone and he, he popped over and started talking to us. That yeah, was shout out! I was shout out to our dude. dude. Yeah, and we did some 3D printing. Sure. We were right next to the 3D printer. Uh, we got some coasters and <laughs> yeah. some pins. Yeah, that was you know that was kind of fun to see that work. They they also had like a fun little like um, like flow designer escape room where you had to like oh uh huh they had like a UI that you had to like follow hints. And then, like, once you found the hint, you had to go to another instance and, like, fix the flow. And then, like, kind of mm. come back to – it would, like, progress the story. So it's kind of like a little, like, how to navigate flow, how to do some tests in flow, and a little bit of, like, you know, escape room. So. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and so now John and I are both in Salt Lake. 
as you can see his beautiful forest uh, behind not him. quite I, i'm further okay. north <laughs> the district, the district of Salt Lake, or fine, we're both in Utah. All right, we're both in That's Utah. That's right, we're both in Utah. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to keep this short just to give you a high level. If there is a website that a lot of the content from knowledge is on, um, let me see if if I can bring if I can bring that up. Ooh, uh, we, we got a pretty good question though. Did you see that ooh. question about generative AI? Oh yeah. What's the question? Uh, is generative AI going to take ServiceNow developer jobs? So I don't think so. So Safe Harbor, right? Um, we got to see some a peek into some of the Vancouver stuff um, with generative AI. And what the first thing that they're doing is essentially enabling more spokes to work with mm -hmm. AI models. So sure. Like that's kind of the step one for ServiceNow is like, hey, you want to use ChatGPT, you want to use uh, Azure AI, you want to use, you know, whatever they're trying to use Integration Hub to to go and collect that information. Um, so, is it going to replace? No. If anything, it's going to help our jobs a lot. Like to be able to do code reviews, to be able to yeah. to help you point to documentation a lot quicker. Like I think that's where it's going to really shine the most. You know, I, and, I, and I agree with that. I, whenever anyone asks me about AI, it's always it, it, currently, and I'll say that now, currently, it is definitely a tool to use to either help you do things faster. Like, you know, I use it to help come up with um, functions and methods in uh, ES12 because it's not, you know, I, I'm very used to ES5, but ES12 is new to me. And so I like to write things more efficiently. So I'm, I'm always asking chat GPT how to write a function in ES12. Um, and then occasionally I'll be like, yeah, I need that same function in ES5 though. <laughs> so to me, it's a great, it's a great way to speed up your development time. But I, I think with the generative stuff, I think what I see is it enabling a lot of those citizen developers to do more things um, and branching into code-based things versus staying low code or no code and, and, and not really, I guess, growing in that, in that way. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I think one of our podcasts, John, what we should do is do the experience in like studio, like you do the experience in studio, I do it in low code, no code, and see who can like, you know, get it quicker. Because I'm not gonna lie. I, it takes I, me forever. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we could flip. You could have whichever one you want. But <laughs> recently, I was I was working in studio, and I I had to build a simple table with some columns and rows, and and I realized it, it took me like maybe an hour, hour and a half, and um to 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 get it where I wanted. And I'm like, I probably could have done this in ten minutes in uh, App Engine, and so I think right. that would be a fun one. To, to do yeah. yeah yeah so i think to answer the question i don't see uh ai generative ai taking our jobs anytime soon now that I, six I'll put months six to 12 that. months yeah <laughs> six to 12 months six to 12 months that's that's how far our horizon goes yeah, yeah. cool right, all right right it depends on the exponential growth of ai in yeah. that time to see what happens <laughs> yeah cool any uh any tidbits like what's one thing you would tell new people that go to knowledge every year like what's the what's the one wow. thing that uh, advice <laughs> get comfortable shoes <laughs> mm. <laughs> um no i you know again i think i think a big thing is you know especially for and anyone who belongs to SN Devs or on Tim's uh, Discord channel, seek out those people you've talked to. You know, set something up to meet them, meet the people, because um, it's it. Again, I think the personal interaction is, is a huge, a huge component of this ecosystem. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a big thing. But you know, prepare to to be in in sessions and labs all day long. You know, it's, it's a full day deal and there's a lot of good information that can be found, but it's, it's sometimes can be a little hit or miss. 
yeah, for, for me, my advice is like, it's not about going to knowledge with the problem that you're having, like go to knowledge with the open mind that you can learn a bunch of stuff really like easily. And you get to talk yeah. to the experts of that. Yeah. Like I don't work a lot in RPA, but I got to take an RPA lab. Right. And it's like, you, you get that container of assistance and help that you want to, to safely explore, you know, some of the cool stuff that ServiceNow is doing. If, if you've been thinking about virtual agents, yeah. right. And you haven't had the time, it's like, great, do it at knowledge so you can get the support you need as well as learning it. So. Yeah. And, and one more piece of advice, don't be afraid to, um, show up to a lab or a session that you didn't sign up for mm. um, because you may be able to get in uh, because not everyone shows up. There's always a chance. Don't think that just because you didn't get signed up for it, you can't ever get into it. Yep. Cool. All right. So John, how the chickens doing? Last, last thing. Uh, they're pretty good. They're doing all right. I'm, they're just, moving around we need yeah, to get one so on the show interesting one of these days. yeah i should um <laughs> when they when a, when a chicken lays an egg they want to tell the world about it and that's what they'll do so they'll lay an egg and then they'll come out squawking for about five minutes to make sure everyone knows that they laid an egg amazing they almost amazing. they almost sound like roosters they're so loud it's it's crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks. It's been fun, John. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna yeah. get back into more of a routine. So hopefully you guys yes. we'll, yes. we'll Let's see do you guys it. soon. All right.